Hiya, my name is Lily and welcome back to my channel. I am going to be doing a sort of list of books that I hope I'm going to get to soon. This is in lieu of doing an August TBR and I think that's because, I mean basically, I'm tired of TBRs. <laughs> Like, I keep setting TBRs because of um, readathons. That's the only time I ever set TBRs is if there's a readathon. So, because I've been doing so many readathons, I've had a lot of TBRs, and it means I've not been able to get to a lot of the books that I really want to get to, and I'm kind of sad about that. I'm getting really drained from feeling like I have to read a certain number of books by a certain time. So, I thought August and September. August is my last full month without a job basically, not because I'm like unemployed but because um, my grad job doesn't start until September, just to clarify. I do kind of have a job but I'm a zero hours worker so I get to dictate my hours. Yes, now is the time to crunch really loudly on your food. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> so yeah, because I'm a zero hours worker I get to dictate my hours so in August I'm going to still be working quite a bit but I'm going to have more time off and I'm going to be living alone so I'll have more time to read and then the first two weeks of September I have off because my job doesn't start until the 14th and those two weeks I'm not going to be working at either job and they're going to be kind of like my holiday time so in that whole stretch I just want to mood read I want to read the books I'm excited to read I don't want to be caught up in trying to complete readathons as much as I love readathons I'm done for now <laughs> so I didn't want to set a straight TBR but I wanted to just have a little chatty video about the different books that I'm really excited to get to soon and I'm hoping I will get to in August or September or sometime in the next few months there's I mean you've probably seen from my thumbnail there's quite a big stack next to me and it's a very colourful stack as well so I'm quite excited by that but yeah I'm gonna try and get through it as quickly as I can because I don't want to sit here like doing a 40 minute video about each book. The first book that I really want to get to is Orphan Monster Spy and this was gifted to me. I am afraid I can't remember who it was. I'm really sorry but I know I thanked them personally so it's okay. This was gifted to me quite a while ago now, a couple of months I think and I've been wanting to get to it since it was gifted to me. Like it arrived and I was like oh my god I need to read this book soon because I've been so hyped for it and not had it. And it's just not fit into any of my readathon TBRs so far and I'm really mad about that. So, um, I mean it did fit into Pixarathon's TBR but I ran out of time. I'm really excited to read it and I'm so grateful to be gifted to it because, yeah, and it's so pretty. I'm really excited to read this. Next is another book from my Pixarathon TBR that I didn't get to and that is Crescent City by Sarah J Maas. And I know this came out ages ago, this is the Waterstones exclusive with Red Sprayed Edges and I'm really excited. I was a bit nervous, I didn't actually order it at first, I actually bought this in person in a bookstore, like off the shelf, because I was really nervous. I didn't think adult fantasy was going to be for me, even if it was Sarah J Maas, but then I've heard other Sarah J Maas fans who don't ordinarily read adult fantasy saying it's really good, really accessible, and like her best book yet, so... Yeah, I am very excited to get to this and again I'm really sad I didn't get to read it during Pixarathon but I can't wait to read it, I'm really excited. <laughs> this is the last book that's carrying over from my Pixarathon TBR but it's a good one so I don't even care if you're annoyed about hearing them twice and it is Night House by Lee Bardugo and oh, I know this is the tour edition, it's signed because I met her on tour in Leeds and I just haven't read it yet, I've been too nervous. <laughs> I actually tried to read it, um, I think it was just after the tour, so after I'd got it signed, because oh, I must have been just after the tour, because I didn't buy this until the tour, the, but yeah, I tried to read it just after the tour, and it wasn't the right time for me, it wasn't into it, so I put it down knowing I'd come back to it later, and I feel ready now, I really want to read this, but obviously this and Crescent City are really chunky books, and that's why I kept putting them off to Pixar, to be honest with you, because I was scared that I wouldn't get as many books done as I wanted to if I tried to tackle the chunky ones. But I'm going to tackle it soon. The next book is Havenfall and this is, I think it's fairy loot? Let me see if it says. It doesn't say but I think this is the fairy loot. It's the hardback with the blue sprayed edges and it's got a signed book plate. I bought this second hand on Depop because I thought it was really beautiful and I was like hey if I don't like it I can always resell it for the price I bought it for. So that's fine with me and yeah I'm really excited to read this one it's really pretty I really like the idea of the premise and I'm really excited about the next book coming out it has a really beautiful cover as well so I want to read this before the next book comes out please don't judge me for the next one 
I want to read Skyward by Brandon Sanderson and I have the fairy loot edition with the spray edges and I haven't read it yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've had it for so long and honestly like I just don't know why I haven't picked it up. I think because I found out that Brandon Sanderson is usually a adult fantasy writer I was kind of worried that this wouldn't be very good and I've mostly only heard reviews or when I first got it I mostly only heard reviews from people who almost exclusively read his adult and other adult fantasies I didn't hear many reviews from people who are usually YA readers but I've now heard reviews from people who are YA readers and they've said this is really good YA so I now have faith in it again and I'm really excited this will probably be my first Brandon Sanderson I don't see myself picking up another one of his books before this one so I'm excited I'm looking forward to it and honestly I kind of just want to read it now because I want to get the second book in hardback before it goes out of print in hardback I have no shame. <laughs> it's the only reason I want to read it immediately. Next up is a book that has been on my radar for literally years and I haven't picked it up yet and that is why I'm no longer talking to white people about race. I first heard about this book through Fantastic Books and Where to Find Them and um, I'm sorry I can't remember his first name. <laughs> I'm really bad at remembering people's real names but I follow him on Instagram and he mentioned this book years ago. I, when did it come out? When were you published book? So this was first published in Britain in 2017 and I'm pretty sure that's when I heard it talked about by this um, Instagram bookstagrammer. So I wanted to read it since then. Haven't been able to like pick it up for various reasons but recently I managed to get it cheap in Tesco and I'm really excited to read this because I've honestly wanted to read it for years. So oh, Yes, and I'm just really sad it didn't fit into any readathon prompts so far, so I'm going to be reading it next month. Might be the first book I read, I can't decide, it depends when I'm in the mood for non-fiction, but it'll happen. The next book is A Court of Miracles by Kester Grant, and the only reason I actually bought this one is because my friend V was raving about how pretty it is and how good it is and how much they liked it, so I was like, yeah, okay, fine. They talked about it enough that I was like, okay, if they have the Waterstones exclusive edition, in Waterstones when I went to York to pack up my stuff then I would get it and of course <laughs> they did so I have it now um it's got the dark blue sprayed edges which is really cool um I don't think is it signed I don't think it's signed no it's not signed it's just got the sprayed edges which is cool so um this is a Les Mis retelling I believe but apparently it's quite a loose retelling but it's a fantasy it looks really cool and it's very pretty and shiny and yeah I'm hoping it's gonna be good the next one I'm very excited about and that is Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nyang and that's because I read Girls of Paper and Fire back in June I want to say I read it in June I don't think it was part of my Pixar on TBR maybe it was I can't remember but anyway I read it recently and I loved it and I had the fairy loot edition of that one I think in my is it behind me you probably can't see it it's probably not in shot but um yeah I had the fairy loot edition and I finally read it and I really really loved it and I was surprised by that I thought it might not be my thing but it was and now I'm really excited to read the next one I'm not sure if this is the conclusion or not I'm not sure if it's just a duology I think it might be and if it is that makes me happy because I much like I much prefer duologies and trilogies because I don't have the patience for a really long series <laughs> The next book is a book that I'm definitely going to be reading in August and that is A Darker Shade of Magic by V. Schwab. The reason I'm definitely going to be reading this is because it is the August pick for the Schwab read along um, hosted by Kate from Kate Loves Colour and Alison from Antari Reads and I want to read it and be able to watch the live show having actually read it and not getting spoiled. Um, funny story, my um, autism mentor who I had through at uni asked for a book recommendation and I recommended V. Schwab to her and this is the book she picked out of all of them and she didn't actually like it so that makes me a little bit nervous, she found it a bit slow but I have now recommended, is it here? I recommended Vicious, I think she'll much prefer that, that's more her speed so hopefully she'll like that one but I have a lot of faith, I think I'm gonna like this one, I have tried reading it before and not loved it but I don't think I was in the mood for it then. I also want to read American Panda and this I got from a giveaway and I was very grateful and I was very excited because I've wanted to read this for a really long time and I've not actually seen it on the shelves much in the UK basically and yeah it sounds really cute and funny but also like it's going to tackle some serious topics I feel like it's going to be kind of relatable for me in some ways so yeah I am very excited to read this book 
this joint with Crescent City and Ninth, ha Ninth House are probably my three most anticipated reads that I just cannot wait to get to. And that is Kingdom of Souls. Oh, I am so excited. I have heard so many people raving about this one. I think the first person I heard talking about it was Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction, and then Beth from Books Nest has been talking about it. And those two, I really trust their recommendations. They're very similar in taste to me. So when they both were raving about it, and I saw how pretty the cover was, I was like, you know what? I think I'm just gonna have to go for it. And then I brought this as a present to myself for kind of the sad graduation present because I didn't get to graduate and I had to go move my stuff out of my room from York and come home having no celebration so I decided my celebration was going to be buying myself Kingdom of Souls because it's pretty and it's quite cheap for a hardback so yeah I'm really excited I think this might be the first one I pick up it's either going to be this Crescent City or Ninth House that I pick up first after my Pixarathon's finished so I guess you'll find out in a wrap up at some point which ones I pick up. Okay, so the last book that I'm really excited to read, and honestly, I'm impressed I've got through this video so quickly, I thought I would ramble. So, last book, we're nearly there, guys. <laughs> and that is A Beautifully Foolish Endeavour by Hank Green. So, I controversially did not like An Absolutely Remarkable Thing because I did not like April May. I found her really annoying, I really didn't like her. It wasn't even annoying actually, I just didn't like her personality, I didn't like her reasoning. And then Hank was just kind of like, mm, if you don't like April May, I have bad news for you. And I was like, no, I love you. But yeah, I honestly still want to read this book and I'm really excited to read it because despite the fact that I don't like April May, I really, really liked the sci-fi element and I was really intrigued by that and I want to find out what's going on with the Carls, quite honestly. And this is just a duology as far as I'm aware, this is going to be the wrap-up book. And it's kind of chunky, but not huge. So yeah, I'm really excited to get to this one. I'm really intrigued to see how this ends. Okay, that is the whole of my list of books that I'm really excited to get to soon. Hopefully I'll read a significant chunk of these during August and September. And yeah, I'm so excited. There's some really, really great books on that pile. And honestly, if I get to read any of them, I'll be happy. So I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm just hyped. I'm very hyped. I think I'm just going to have to end it here because otherwise it's going to ramble. So if you like this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel to see more. If you have any comments on the books I talked about, if you have any recommendations for me, or if you think there's any I should pick up first, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Bye.